it depends on your starting and ending position example you're on the ground ground floor and you want to reach the first floor this is the first floor i'm giving example the similar example what i was given discussed in the previous session so you're on the ground and you want to move to the first floor and there are different paths available for you you have stairs to move from ground floor to first floor and you also have a ladder so that you can move from ground floor to first floor so when you compare the useful work done when you compare like example a person of mass of weight 600 newton mass is 60 kg use a ladder uh, sorry use a stairs and go up another person with a mass of same mass 600 newton because when you are moving up you are actually lifting your weight so that's why i use the weight so example another person of identical weight which is 600 newton and climb the ladder from ground floor to the top both reaches the first floor from ground to first when we compare the useful work done so when we compare the useful work done so what is the useful work done or work done the work done is equals to force multiplied by distance they move so force which they are applying because they have the identical they have the identical weight so they they are applying a force of 600 and example if i say the distance between the floors from ground floor to the top the first floor example it is 20 meters so the force which they apply they are lifting themselves that's why weight is equal to their force multiply by distance they move that's 20 meter so 6 multiply by 2 that's equal to 12 and three zeros will be there so it will be 12000 joules so how much useful work done by a it's 12000 what is the useful work done by b that's also 12000 so if you have identical objects and they reach the same position they will have the same useful work done there will be waste energies but the useful work done the work done to move from ground floor to first floor for a it is same as for b is this clear the concept of work done yes sir so if identical objects are there ob uh, the condition object should be identical so that they have the same force and we should move them to a same distance then when we compare the useful work done we will get the same useful work done so what it shows it shows that work done the useful work done does not depends on the route another student is there or another person is there and he use a rope to he use a rope like example this is a rope he use a rope to move from ground floor to the top floor what will be the work done for this person of same weight 600 newton what will the value for the work done for the person who is using a rope to move from ground floor to the first floor 12000 joules 12000 joules so what it shows it shows because because it also reach the same height and i mentioned it has the same weight that's why it will also have the same work done so work done does not depends on the route or the path which we follow if we have identical objects and we have the same final positions for objects then they all will have a same work done same useful, like useful work done yes so like the total energy output will be more like for some of them but the useful yeah. work and use, that's correct uh, fifth 
the useful yeah the person the example the last example if i am saying a person the one who lose most of its energy or waste input energy will be higher but the useful energy or useful work done will be same some of the energy will be wasted it's like one will have more waste energy than the other yes we have wasted that's more right energy. one of them will have greater waste energy than the other but the useful work done is same okay sir thank you so example a crane lift a load of 1000 newton through a vertical distance a height of 3 meter calculate the work done what will be the work done a force of 1000 lifting the object 3000 3000 joules but if this question if i change this question yeah 3000 is a right answer but if the same question was crane lift a load of 1000 kg instead of newton if it was okay. kg it will be 3 million 3000 so if mass is given to calculate a work done work done is force multiplied by distance so what is the force which we apply we don't apply a force of 1000 kg because it's not a unit for force so what force we apply it will be 1000 multiplied by 10 why 1000 multiplied by 10 because whenever we are lifting an object the force which we apply the minimum force which you should apply equal to the weight of the object it should be practically more than that but the minimum force for calculation should be equal to weight so that's why the weight will be 10000 now and this 10000 multiplied by 3 so it will be 30000 Joules. Is it clear? Then how we define a power? power is how much work is done in a unit time like example say the same examples i am taking the person was using a stair to move from ground floor to the first floor another person was using a ladder and the third one was using a rope so they all have the same work done that's it but the person who was using a stair he took 20 seconds to reach the first floor a person who was climbing a ladder he took 10 seconds to reach the first floor and the person who, who was using a rope he took 15 seconds to reach the top or the surface so they all have the same work done as we discussed but what about power power means how much work is done in a unit time so work divided by time we will get the power so if i say which one is having greater power a b or c which one is using greater power to do the work done a b, b. or c So B is using greater amount of power. So power is how much work done or how much energy used in one second. That simply refers to power. So they have different powers, but they are doing the same useful work done. So power is work done divided by time. So this will be for if we want to calculate power for A, it will be twelve thousand divided by twenty. If we want to calculate power for B, it's twelve thousand. Divided by ten, and powers for C it's twelve thousand divided by fifteen. So the one which is developing the highest power is taking the short time. So your they have different power because they are using different energy in one second. But the final or the useful work done is same. 
same thing if i say uh, there is a race athletes are participating in the race and you are looking from the top this race so athlete a b and c and this is a finish line so this is a finish line athlete a apply a force of Thirty newton, and he complete this race in ten seconds. Athlete B also apply a force of thirty newton, but he completed his race. in 5 seconds an athlete c also applied a force of 30 newton and he completed his race in 15 second which one developed the least power smallest power So C developed the least power because it takes more time to do the work done. And when we compare the work done, in this case, all have the useful work done same because applying a same force, and they all participate in the race, which is equal distance for every athlete. That's why the useful work done will be same. So what it shows, it shows power and time are inversely proportional. If you are taking less time means you are developing more power if you are taking more time you are developing a small power or producing a small power or a small amount of energy change per unit second so definition of a power it's amount of energy transfer in a unit time or it is work done per unit time then what is the unit of the power as we know the unit of the work is joules and unit of time si unit of time is second so it's joule per second and joules per second is also known as watts can be denoted by capital w so the power you can write joule per second or you can also say watt or sometime instead of they say calculate power they say rate of doing work or rate of energy transfer or rate at which work is done or rate at which energy is transferred so if these terms are used it means they are asking for power so a crane lift a concrete block of weight 12000 newton through a vertical height of 8 meter in 30 second calculate the power developed by the crane what's the answer the power developed by the crane so 3200 first you calculate a work done which is force multiplied by distance and then power is work divided by time so divided by time keep in mind time should always be in second some question time is in minutes time can be in hours so you have to convert time always in second
Now, what is efficiency? Efficiency, it's the percentage of the useful energy compared to the input energy. Example, efficiency can be used for device. It can be used for any process. So you have a car engine and you fill up the tank uh, with the petrol or gasoline. So as you fill up the tank with a gasoline or petrol, this will have a chemical energy. So example, the petrol which or the tank which you filled up, this was having 100 or 1000 joules of chemical energy. This is a car engine. What is the purpose of the car engine? You are using a car engine to drive the car. Means you want the movement of the car from the engine. So that engine will work and the car can move. So what is the useful energy which you want from the car engine? Kinetic. Kinetic. So this one chemical is an input. And what we want, we want a kinetic energy from the car because we want the car to move. So output will be kinetic. But what happened? Your car engine is not only producing movement or kinetic energy. It also produces heat energy and sound energy. So what happened? This heat energy and sound energy, sound energy is the wasted energy. It's not a useful energy for you. It's a wasted energy. So example, it produced sound also, and it produced heat as well, sound and heat. So you use a chemical energy, which was 10,000, but only out of this 10,000, only 200 joules is used as a kinetic and remaining 800 joule is wasted in the form of heat and sound. So if I say, what is the efficiency of your process or efficiency of your engine? So how you can calculate the efficiency of the engine the formula to calculate the efficiency, efficiency is denoted by small n. It's equal to the useful energy output divided by total energy input multiplied by 100. So this will give us the energy of this process. So useful energy output, what is the useful energy output in this example? The useful energy is 200. What is the total energy input? So useful 1000 multiplied by 100. So when you solve this, the zeros will cancel with zero. So you are left with 20%. So what it shows, it shows only 20% is a useful energy. Remaining 80% is a lost energy. So efficiency of the car engine is only 20% in this example. So the concept of efficiency is used to identify how much is a useful energy compared to the energy, which is input. Is this clear? The concept of efficiency? Yes, sir. If I say a process is 50% efficient, so if a process is 50% efficient, what does it mean? It means Wasted energy is equals to useful energy. The wasted energy and the useful energy will be same if a process is 50% efficient. 
or you can also say useful energy is half of the input energy so example if i say a process is 50% efficient and the input energy is 1000 so if it is 50% efficient how much is the useful energy 500 joules and how much is the wasted energy it's also five so it will be same so input is equals to 1000 but output because if i say a process is 50% efficient so output energy will be half of the input energy so it will be 500 the useful output not only output the useful and the wasted output is also 500 so for a process which is 50% efficient the useful energy or the wasted energy is both are and the useful and the wasted energy both are equal so if you want to calculate the efficiency you can use the formula it can be in terms of energy it can be in terms of power it depends on what is given in the question so efficiency is useful energy output divided by energy input multiplied by 100 or power output divided by power input multiplied by 100 both ways you can use so example energy from a petrol is used to operate an engine the engine drives the generator which produce electrical energy so first what happen energy from the petrol is 400 then it do a work done the engine supply a work done to move the generator coil and generator is producing 100 joules of electrical energy now the question is what is the overall efficiency how to find the overall efficiency what is the input energy in this process how much is the input 400 joules 400 joule is the input energy and what is the useful output what what output you want because you want to a generator we want to produce electricity so what is the useful output so this 100 joule is a useful so if i say overall efficiency so efficiency is useful output which is 100 divided by total input which is 400 multiplied by 100 so when you solve this this zeros so it will only be 25% efficient this whole process is only 20 25% efficient now if i see if i change the question and say what is the efficiency of the engine not overall efficiency if i change the question what is the efficiency of not the whole process but about the engine so efficiency of the engine so when you calculate for engine what is the input energy for engine it's 400 and what is the output energy it's 120 for engine only so it will be 120 divided by 400 into 100 so when you solve for this will be 30% so engine is only 30% efficient and what is the efficiency of the generator if the same question but instead of engine if i ask what is the efficiency of this generator so for a generator the input is 120 and output is 100 what is the efficiency of this generator from where i got 120 because in the question i asked what is the efficiency of the engine so engine is taking in this is what in engine is taking in 400 and engine is giving out 
useful output is 120 there is a wasted wasted is not given here but the useful output is 120 so efficiency of engine only it's useful output which is 120 divided by input for the engine 400 multiplied by 100 so when you solve your engine is only 30 percent efficient but what about efficiency of the generator a generator takes 120 joules of energy this is the energy taken by the generator and it gives out 100 joules and only wasted a small amount which is 20 so what is the efficiency of a generator is a useful output divided by input for the generator multiplied by 100 so when you solve you will get 83 point it should be 100 divided by 120 not 120 divided by because it's output for generator this is the output and 120 is the input so this will be 83.3 percent useful like efficient and engine is 30 percent efficient so which one is wasting most of the energy the engine or the generator where the most of the energy is lost the engine the engine so the device the system which is having low efficiency it will have higher waste energy the system or a device which is having higher efficiency will have a lower waste or small amount of waste is this clear this example yes sir So there's efficiency for overall process, there's efficiency for devices as well.